Hello and welcome to the 160th playthrough of Gettysburg. So, as I said in my introduction here, we were playing out a scenario that I uh, designed kind of on the fly uh, for the attack by early on Howard's 11th Corps on the north side of Gettysburg on day one of the battle. And we're on to the first turn, which is the, uh, the 2 p.m., 1400 turn and uh, kind of giving you a little overview here where where units have wound up here at the end of the turn <clears throat> so let's take a look first off at the uh, the AM draws we'll come back and take a look at uh, what happened over on the uh, um, in the battle itself so first off <clears throat> for the efficiencies Confederates will always have four uh, as I said in the introduction, uh, they're on the attack. They're just going to press and, and go as, as much as possible. So they will always have an efficiency of four. Union drew a two, <clears throat> which meant Barlow and Shorts uh, had uh, just two AMs for uh, each of their divisions out there. Uh, meanwhile, Early had four. So this is the distribution of how it went. Early, obviously, was... Uh, they had the initiative, so picked early as the first one. He came in and uh, pushed troops forward. We'll talk about that here in a bit. Then it went Barlow, Barlow, which was interesting because it allowed Barlow to move Ames up into uh, into an attack position, which we'll, which we'll show here in a minute. Uh, but it also used both of their activations, so he had to just absorb the rest of Early's attacks because early was just really much coming online and really his attacks came in the in the next two chits here and then followed by uh shorts early shorts again uh to wind up the the turn so it was kind of interesting in terms of the uh the distribution there let's jump back over and you can take a look at the uh the overall situation here first so Coming down the Harrisburg Pike, uh, Gordon, who was aligned up here, basically moved down here in advance, then jumped into attack mode over here. Gordon, you can see, wound up over here, and he's about to press on uh, Blucher's knob. Blucher's knob, sorry. And uh, Early came up and uh, was, was uh, riding with him. Initially, uh, Gordon came through the woods, kind of this marshy area, to kind of hit from the north and link up with Doles over here to the uh, to the west. <clears throat> and that was somewhat successful. I'll talk about Doles here in a, in a few minutes. They, we then had Hayes coming on board and coming down the Harrisburg Road and basically getting in line just to the east of. Uh, Gordon's flank and to push down here. So they'll be facing off against Ames's uh, brigade uh, down in this uh, this area here in the next turn. They're all in line and, uh, and ready to go. Avery, again, came in following Hayes. And they kept Avery only taking two AMs, basically getting on the board and just moving up here as much as possible. His command went forward uh, just to stay in command for the next turn. So he, uh, even though he's forward here of his units, he is in command. The units are just sitting back there waiting for the command to get in there. My thought pattern on this is that, you know, once Avery and um, Gordon finish their initial attacks, they're going to be the big breakthrough troops to hopefully get down into the town itself and uh, and support from there. So hopefully <coughs> Hayes is going to be able to break through over here and drive down here. Gordon will continue his assault over here over here to the uh, to the uh, left. Now with Doles coming over here, this was kind of interesting. He was aligned up here and had to get around some of this marshy area. And he came online just on this rise over here and then attacked the skirmishers up here. Some interesting dice rolls came out from, from this. First off, they did push back some of the skirmishers. And uh, some of the units uh, did get forward to go after the 74th Pennsylvania and the 61st Ohio. But 74th put up a heck of a fight right here. Uh, 
between this unit here, the, um, the Fourth Georgia, and uh, or excuse me, not the Fourth Georgia. Excuse me, it's the other one here. It was the Forty Fourth Georgia, and Fort Fourth Georgia got kind of beat up from it. You notice they're disordered, and they lost two strength points uh, in the battle or in the firefight over here. The uh, 74th Pennsylvania really poured it on to them and really stood their ground for the most part. They were, they took two uh, small disorders, dice roll disorders, um, and passed them both, even with a four, which is pretty low and pretty hard to uh, to get. Even though it's a 50-50 chance, most of the time when I'm rolling them, they'll, uh, they'll roll high. But he actually stood his ground. The only reason why he didn't um, stand his ground over here is... Uh, the other skirmishers uh, had retreated, and the line kind of had folded back over here. So he was on his own, and you notice that the 12th Georgia over here um, has uh, gone in to uh, flank them uh, over there as well. So uh, actually what I should do here is just uh, let, me, let me give you some a little bit closer view. That would help. There we go. Uh, maybe up a little bit. There we go. That'll help you kind of see the units. So he was being flanked. He was going to be flanked over here. So he fell back, got into a little bit more firefight, and wound up disrupted overall in the end. Same with, with these units over here. But the big and interesting piece of it with Doles is, first off, Doles was wounded and had to leave the field. So you notice there's a replacement on him. And also, through various shots, either with skirmishers, or, like I said, the firefight over here, or this little firefight over here, every single one of Dole's regiments has disordered. So he's now actually brigade combat ineffective, uh, surprisingly. So I, I think he'll get out of it pretty quick, but it's it's going to pinch him here probably for one turn. Um, I figure probably two of these units will recover per activation, but still, that doesn't leave... Uh, doesn't leave a lot of time for them to uh, to do much the next turn there. So we'll see what he happens over here uh, on the uh, the Confederate left. The Union is in pretty decent shape. Uh, Schimmel Fling Schimmel Fling Fig is holding his ground as I said. Too disrupted over here. Um, this unit did did lose one strength point. They do have a skirmisher over here as well. Um, so they're a little bit beat up. Uh, the 157th New York extended its line, got into a little firefight over here, got the better of the uh, 12th Georgia. Okay, um, Von Gilsa over here, who was holding the other part and mostly of Bloker's Knob, um, he took some, some pretty decent damage. First off, the 66th New York right here routed um, in the attack up here to the north. Uh, the 54th New York uh, had to retreat. They've taken some casualties. They are... Uh, uh, no, they're, they're still at four, aren't they? Yeah, sorry. They recombine. That shouldn't be on there. So they've had to retreat um, back over here. We've got the uh, other units over here. Oops, I just flipped them. Sorry. Here we go. Come on. Here we are. Of course, I touch them and they, they flip over. And actually, he was disordered as well. They got into a little firefight with Early, uh, with the troops under Early, which was the uh, 51st Georgia. Uh, again, putting out some casualties, strength losses over here on them. Early is trying to try to rally them over there. Um, we also have the other... 58th Georgia moving up uh, over here to uh, to attack the 17th Connecticut and the skirmishers over there to the left. So uh, Von Gelsa has really taken the hit, but dished out quite a bit against Gordon as well. Um, there was another disorder here that Gordon was sitting on top of that he uh, he helped out and got them moving again. Um, like I said, Ames has moved up over here. They are reserving the uh, 107th Ohio, the largest unit, as 
something hopefully that can put up a defense if if it, or actually say when these guys break and fall back uh, which i think will happen you can see that the 17th connecticut is already a disordered they're only at a two at this stage so 70 percent chance they're going to break again on another fire of uh, another shot um same thing over here with the ohio holding the road and they're about to be assaulted by as i said hayes's units over here as well um, the good news from the Union perspective, though, because Schimmelflag Fig, Fing is doing well over here, uh, we got um, our, our good old Polish-Prussian general over here that I will not try to pronounce, Kresnuski, Krez, uh, on here. And I know I'm butchering it, so I apologize, but... Uh, is what it is. He, he is still in reserve. He has not moved up. Uh, and what I mean by reserve, he's not in reserve orders. He is just sitting here waiting over here. So uh, they're still in good order. They does not have to move up yet. Um, and that might help here. Uh, that might be helped here by Doles being uh, being beat up pretty severely the first, first turn. So this is where we're at uh, after the first turn. Um, pretty much equal attacking. Uh, in terms of historical, I f my feeling so far is a pretty good little A historical over here, particularly on this side. Uh, this side seems pretty much the same. A lot of skirmishing and falling back um, over here. We have Wilkinson's guns, I should have mentioned before. Wilkinson's guns still up here, um, which there are nine <coughs> uh, cohesion I forgot about, uh, which is pretty tough to break, but you know they're they're going to be facing off against infantry. They're probably going to have to fall back here uh, pretty soon, uh, but hopefully not. Hopefully they can get out of here before anything happens. But I'm not sure. But again, historically they were they were lost there as well. Uh, for the Confederate artillery, they've been exchanging back and forth, fairly ineffective. A um, few lower case Ds, uh, or I should say, low cost Ds with negative modifiers. Um, so Union was was okay. Um, did move up the uh, Napoleons that were sitting there in reserve as well uh, to try to break this up here a little bit. Um, they did disorder these skirmishers, um, so that will help here a little bit. Now they won't be able to get to these guys behind them, but at least uh, you know they're in position to support if if and when they break through uh, over here. So that is. The 2 p.m. turn, 1400. Uh, we'll move on to the 1500 turn, 3 p.m. turn. Uh, again, getting more engagement over here. We'll see what happens over here to recover um, and continue on uh, from there. So hopefully you're enjoying this. Um, again, for the 160th anniversary of the Battle of Gettysburg. It's uh, early attacks, the uh, 11th Corps of the Union on the first day. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. Thank <laughs> you. Okay, welcome back with 160th playthrough Gettysburg. And uh, this is uh, Early's attack on the 11th Corps, July 1, 1863. So we're at turn two uh, with the battle. And uh, it's really kind of heated up here, uh, as you can see by the, the grand overview. I'll go into some detail first, but as always, want to start with the uh, start with the initiative, so you can see how that uh, that went down. And I'll jump over here and show you this. There we go. So uh, no surprise, uh, initiative went to um, Confederates. Uh, so early was the first one out. Union did get three efficiency of three draws. So um, both Barlow and Shorts uh, were able to get three uh, AMs a piece uh, on there. Now uh, Von Gil uh, Gilsa, he uh, he was out of command, so he, he reduced by one, but. Here's how they actually happen. So we had early kicked off first, um, continuing the attack, followed by Schwartz, 
uh, Barlow Schwartz again. Uh, so this actually was pretty good for the union because this allowed um, Schwartz to kind of fire on some of the Confederate units um, early and try to uh, disorder them uh, before they could get into attack. It did kind of work, probably about a 50-50 mix uh, within there. Then we had Early uh, coming back, continuing the attack. Shirts, Early, Barlow, Barlow, Shirts. So Barlow was kind of skewed towards the back end. Early kind of uh, mixed in here, and Shirts up front, uh, you know, more towards the, the beginning of it, uh, beginning of the turn uh, than anything else. So it was interesting. It made for an interesting mix. And if I jump back over to our uh, overview here, um, you can see where everything wound up at the end of the uh, 3 o'clock turn. So where we're at with this, you can see early Gordon and Hayes really have pushed down in here. Actually, I'm going to zoom you in here while I think of it. So you can see some of this detail. Uh, over here, you can see that uh, both Gordon and Hayes really pushed in there. Gordon kind of let off here, pushing over Bloker's Knoll and um, really pushing the Confederates out. A lot of them, you know, just broke and ran. And I'll show you, you know, what happened with the routes. And uh, Gordon was able to continue pushing down here. The bigger thing over here was that Hayes, if you remember, was lined up for the attack over here. They crossed both at the bridge and um, over uh, uh, over the Marsh Creek itself, or excuse me, Rock Creek itself, and attacked uh, Ames's troops that were holding out at uh, um, the uh, Vice, Ma Vice Mantle Farm and down at the county almshouse. And they were able to push down to the, uh, to the um, county almshouse and uh, engage the rest of Ames's brigade as well as Barlow's headquarters and what was left of Von Gilsa, who was over here under the command finished, I should take that off, um, over here. And you notice he's kind of stuck out here right now. I'll explain that in a few minutes. Um, so they've really pushed along here. They were able to capture, also capture Wilkinson's uh, battery up here. Um, they got into this hex and was able to get into the fold where they couldn't shoot at them very well and capture them before they could retreat. Um, and now you can see that some of Gordon's are just kind of providing flank defense as the rest of Gordon's units are, are pushing up over here with, with Hayes over here as well. The one kind of disappointment here has been Dole's over here. Um, oh, he's not. Well, I'll take that off here and explain in a minute. Take his um, command complete off over there. Uh, Dole's units really haven't been able to recover very well because they've recovered some units and their their brigade combat ineffectiveness is is gone because we do have um, two at least two regiments here that are in good order. One has collapsed. He got fire from the um, 13th New York, uh, really kind of devastated him, and he collapsed. He's down to, um, I think it's just three, yep, three three strength points left, and he's heading, heading back. Um, so he's out of the battle. So there's really just three units left. Out of that, one is disordered still. Uh, the other two are in good order, but that will take off the brigade combat and effectiveness. So, you know, they're, they're not in great shape, but they're kind of holding up the rest of these Union units up here, which I feel are going to have to fall back because their flank is now exposed with just the artillery units um, over here, you know, really kind of holding off. Even the first Ohio artillery moved back over here to kind of protect more of the um, college area down over in here. So my feeling is they're going to probably slowly retire back into somewhere around here um, to, you know, uh, cover their cover their right flank, you know, within there. But they basically have held out um, so that uh, our good uh, Prussian Polish general down here didn't have to come up and reinforce up here. So he's got a nice solid line just on the rise above this little run right here by the almshouse. 
So that'll give them some protection or some ability to hold off here um, for a little bit. Now, next turn, uh, the 5 o'clock turn, we will actually get Coster, who's just sitting off map here. Here's his jits. He'll be coming up here to come into the town on the 5 p.m. turn. So he may be able to come up and, and provide some defense in terms of, of stopping or slowing Early's attack with Hayes and, um, and Gordon. Now, Early himself still has Avery in, in pretty much being in fresh condition over here that he can throw into the mix. And they may, what, that, what may happen is this, is that Hayes will come down here trying to turn the flank down by um, Rock Creek and the eastern side of the town. And Avery will fill in the gap between Gordon and um, Gordon and Hayes over in here uh, to push down in here because it would be nice. They will get points for uh, the brick kiln and the college um, over here as well. Now, uh, and, and of course the town over here. So they've really got to push. We're halfway through the game. It's only four turns. So Confederates really have to push, uh, push hard over here. Now, a couple things that I didn't do. You notice I didn't take the brigade combat and effectiveness off. Um, a couple of them are now reached that on the Union side. And that's Von Gilsa, because he has lost two units. And let me, actually, let me flip, flip you around to show you the, um, the routed stuff over here. So let me uh, bring you around over here, and you can see the routed units. So here we have down here, these are the routed units. That's actually the destroyed units. So Ames lost the 17th and 75th Ohio to routes, and the 25th Ohio was completely destroyed. The only one that's left on the board up here with, uh, with him is 107th Ohio right there. He's the only one left on the board. So they're going to be combat brigade ineffective, as well as uh, Von Gilsa over here as well. So right there, um, that's going to make Barlow Division combat ineffective. So right there, the Confederates uh, have gotten 5, 10, and then 15 for, for Barlow um, with those combat ineffectives uh, over there. So they've got 15 points already, plus they've got... Um, Blockers and all, that's 16. To the Union's five, seven, eight points right there. So right now the Confederates are leading handily, um, and we'll see how things how things progress from here. It's uh, it's kind of playing out the same way, which is which is good. That's uh, that's a good thing. A little bit different from the standpoints of how it's happening. Um, again, we have a collapse of of Barlow over here on the left side. We have Shorts over here, his units um, still generally in good shape, but they haven't had the full thrust of Early's uh, attack. Now, Early themselves, they've, they've been hit pretty hard, um, lost some strength points. There's one there. Um, these are Gordon's troops, and then I think there was another one or two. One, yeah, one there. They've lost, and another one with Hayes over here. And then generally you've seen some disruptions over here as well. Um, so they have been taking some damage, but for the most part, it's been been the union that has been lost because of the cohesion. Cohesion levels are so low that um, they don't stand very long. We did have some outstanding pieces over here, like the um, the 74th Pennsylvania um, and a few others, but they they just can't stand too long. Of course, Wilkinson's battery, even though they're they're good guns, and the same thing with the First Ohio over here. Um, they got caught up here in the hill um, by troops coming up around here, and they couldn't couldn't um, couldn't shoot at them. So that is where we stand with the uh, the battle so far. Like I said, this is the end of the 3 p.m. turn. We'll be moving on to the uh, four o'clock turn um, on the next video. And hopefully to see you there. So, again, 160th playthrough. Uh, I should mention GMT Games, uh, three days Battle of Gettysburg, and uh, my own scenario with uh, Early's attack on the 11th Corps. So, 
Thanks for watching. Hopefully see you on the next one.